The demon she keeps sitting on my throne. What does this mean, Naramasa? He is the demon of malediction, Your Majesty. Sorcerers call him up when they want to lay a curse on someone. Well, that we know, but why is he here? I think there is madness within our walls. There is decadence, there is frivolity, there is a dangerous lack of respect for powers both divine and hellish. It is from the temple courtyard. Yes, he and the others like him sit there to show they have been expelled from the temple. It would seem it was carried in through this window. Melted snow, see? And he and others like him must be expelled from your palace, Majesty. I doubt if you could lift him, Naramasa. He is made of bronze. His Majesty teases his faithful priest and exorcist. The window is shuttered from the inside. It opens onto the garden. Straight across from it is the temple. Mm, how far away? A hundred yards, maybe. Not too far for one strong man to carry it. There should be footprints. That part of the garden is little used. Mm. Will you excuse us, Your Majesty? Of course. To the hunt. Thank you, Your Majesty. Good Yukonari and Shonagan, on the trail of our maledictory villain. It has already been a long and crooked trail, Your Majesty. One set of footprints, and as clear as penmanship. Her Majesty insists this place is brushed smooth when there is snow. Well, I'm glad it hasn't been done yet today. They lead directly from the temple courtyard to the palace. And there are no prints leading from the window. Does that mean he's still in the palace? Perhaps. Or he would left by some other way. At least now we can be fairly sure it's a man we're looking for. <laughs> I've met few women who could carry a bronze statue that size such a distance. I couldn't even lift it. Do you believe I'm innocent now? But what if? What if? Lieutenant. This is a clever man and a bold one. He may have carried the statue from temple to palace and then walked Back from palace to temple. Backwards? In his own footprints? Which would then be lost among scores of others. Clever, bold and crazy. And the shuttered window? Well, I suppose some sleepy head could have closed it without noticing the statue. It's not that big. We should talk to the priests and the temple guards. You can hurry. I wonder if you could do that alone. You have an appointment? Yes. And it means a lot to you? Well... It is vital you keep this appointment? Not vital, but it would be politic that I do not break it. Please give my greatest respect to Lord Tadanobu. His new poem is wonderful. Is the wine to your taste, my lord? It is different from what we are used to, I know, but several casks were brought to the Empress from China and I thought we should try it. Why so silent? Is a new poem taking shape in your mind? I was thinking about your new love. My new... You can't mean Yukonari. That is ridiculous. Yes. A policeman. With whom I have been ordered to work by their majesties. By the way, he asked me to tell you how much he admires your most recent work. You told him you were meeting me. Was that wrong? He knows we are friends, that we exchange verses. I don't think so. I can assure you, my lord... You may not have suggested to him that we are more than fellow poets, and I don't doubt that he expressed his admiration, but you didn't tell him we were to meet. He guessed. That is my guess. What if he did? There are many in the palace who would surmise the same. That does not displease me. You said you were to meet someone. He surmised it was an assignation with me, and he sent his best wishes on my poem through you. More of his subtle insolence. Lord Tatanobu, I don't understand your obsession with this man. It's not I who is obsessed. I watched you. Watched me? What do you mean? I have done nothing unseemly, nothing. I watched you in the throne room. Shanagon and Yukinari. The throne room? Where were you? In a gallery. There you were, you and he, merely working under His Majesty's orders, but I saw how you looked at each other, how you moved together, you circling him, he circling you, then striding out to the hunt together. I have seldom seen two people quite so together. It was all like a courtly dance, choreographed to express obsession. 
I think my lord's poetic imagination is deluding him. You have a graceful and fashionable life in the imperial palace. You eat and drink and wear only the finest. You are blessed with the companionship of the empress. You have lords of the palace as lovers. You put all of that at risk. No, my lord. Yes. And if other lords and ladies see you are drifting from me, from a palace lord towards a bedmaker's son, I will not have that, Shanagan. Writing, writing, writing. Naramasa, I did not hear you knock. Your door is open? That may be so. May I come in? And what a pretty picture you made, framed in the doorway for any passerby to see. The elegant lady practices her penmanship. I was composing a poem. Poems, witty letters, your famous lists of frivolous things. Is the poem for Her Majesty? It is, first of all, for myself, an exercise in the art, then it is for Lord Tadanobu. Ah, of course. Of course. He is by far the finest poet in the palace, perhaps in all the land. He honours me by reading my work and commenting upon it. Other lords, too, I hear, share your artful exercises. For a priest, Naramasa, you take a great interest in the social and cultural life of ladies and gentlemen. I must. It is my duty. And much that I see appalls me. I, too, can be appalled by lack of grace, by ill manners, by vulgar innuendo. It is weightier things disturb me, like a demonic statue sitting on His Majesty's throne. That was indeed an outrage. And a symptom, I believe, of a more general malaise. What malaise? Decadence, frivolity, promiscuity. Perhaps these are things to be regretted, but how can they lead to an outrage like that committed in the throne room? They may lead to all kinds of catastrophe, moral and spiritual. They lead people away from eternal truths. We have you to remind us of the truth. Then let me remind you. All things that live must die. Life is decay. We must be constantly mindful of this truth. There is no true mindfulness in poems, frivolous lists, imported Chinese liquor. Do you forget, Naramasa, that I am a poet? Who is more mindful than a poet of the transience of things, of the, the fragile, impermanent beauty of the world? And who can better express that awareness? Oh, woman, you make pretty little feminine verses. Do you think you're another Lord Tadanobu? Do you think you're even the equal of your own father? You are a woman. The only truth you need is in Holy Scripture. Ah, uh, well, let me tell you something true. It is from my frivolous book. It is a misfortune for a priest to be ugly. When such a one declaims from scripture, one has to look away from the pendulous lip, the toad's eyes, the wet nostrils. One simply must look away. Be careful, Lady Shonagon. And so one's mind can wander from holy words. An ugly priest, therefore, may lead one to forgetfulness and sin. You can hurry. Uh, Shonagon, forgive this interruption. You are most welcome. You see, Naramasa, a well-mannered man knocks gently, even on an open door. Mm. Can you spare a few minutes? Of course. We could walk in the garden. It is still very cold. You'd best bring an extra cloak. Ah, good manners and gentlemanly care. A welcome interruption indeed. Yukinare, you have not yet consulted me about these crimes. Believe me, you will have need of an exorcist. You may well be right, Narimasa. I may call on your services soon. It was as cold as this when I first came to the palace. How long ago was that? Five years. I was so inexperienced, so shy and easily embarrassed. Much can change in five years. I looked at all these wondrous, beautiful ladies and lords. I felt constantly ugly. Much change indeed. All the time I felt my hair was dishevelled, my skin mottled. I went about blushing and stumbling. And then when I met the Empress... The supreme, wondrous lady. Indeed. She wore a white dress, a robe of white Chinese damask and two shawls of scarlet damask. Her hair hung down long and loose at her back, and her hands, they were the loveliest things I had ever seen. They seemed to be the colour of light plum blossom, and they moved as delicately as blossom. I couldn't understand how such a being could live in our world. <laughs> you, Kanari, you asked for a few minutes. Should we not be talking about the crimes? Uh, yes. So you've been in the palace five years. How long will he stay? I don't know. 
I can't imagine leaving. And is it entirely unimaginable that you might leave with me? I, I know I excel myself in clumsiness now, but... <laughs> 